Welcome to part two of our Google Slides 101 course. Uh, in this tutorial, you will learn how to create interactive worksheets, a resource that will help you to go paperless and help differentiate your students' learning. I am going ahead and starting um, already in Google Slides. Again, first thing I always do is title my presentation. So this could be homework. Uh, hinting enter to save my changes. Again, I usually just start out with my uh, blank slides. I'm going to go ahead and click off of that. Go ahead and click these off. That way I start with a blank canvas. So to be able to use Google Slides for my students' homework, I like to upload PDFs and do them that way. That way I don't have to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes I will go ahead and recreate things just to make them a bit more interactive than just being able to type over it. Um, but I, I've talked to a lot of teachers who are like, well, I want to use my PDF and have them be able to submit this, um, this worksheet online without having to redo the worksheet to um, save a little bit of time. So what I have them do is save their PDFs as a an image file and be able to do it that way. So um, before I do this, uh, the worksheet I'm going to be using is going to be um, a portrait um, landscape or a portrait um, orientation instead of landscape. So to do to switch up my my orientation, you can go here. And you see that they have four different um, four different slide sizes. So standard would be your standard PowerPoint. Um, they have two different widescreen options as well as custom. So I'm going to click on custom. I'm going to create the paper size eight by, uh, or sorry, eight and a half by eleven inches. And again, if you wanted to um, use different measurements, it's fine. So you can do it right there. So that's going to give me a portrait orientation. Again, I'm going to hide these speaker notes by hitting file, or sorry, view, and speaker notes. That way I have a little bit more room. Um, so last time, whenever we were designing, we looked at background and changing the color of the background. Uh, well, now I'm going to be using the background since you're um, since you want to be able to type on top of a PDF worksheet that's already been created, we're going to create that as a background. Um, so instead of choosing color like we did this time, this time we're going to choose image. And again, it gives you several different options. You can upload it from your computer or from a flash drive um, by URL. You can do it from a Google Drive. Maybe you have a, a PDF of the worksheet that you use already in your Google Drive. Um, or search, but this um, for this we're using PDFs that we already have, so it would either be upload or on your Google Drive. Um, so I'm going to upload mine. I am going to choose upload, and um, actually let me step back and kind of take you through this process. So um, here I have a PDF of something I like to use. Uh, when teaching a Christmas Carol, um, I have my students analyze um, characterization of Scrooge, and so um, this is part of the packet that they do. But they could do this paperlessly without me having to print anything. If I use Google Slides, I could turn it in on their Google Classroom. So what I basically want to do here is I want to make this an image. Now you can go to Save File. Um, Save as and then save it as a uh, an image file, um, or uh, pretty much the easier way to do this would be just to take a screen grab. Um, so screen grab would be Command Shift Four if you're using uh, a Mac computer. In I believe in Chromebooks and things that it's similar. Um, I don't know off the top of my head exactly what the shortcut is for that, but you can Google um, take screen grab uh, or something of that nature. Or you can use an application and find a screen grab tool. Um, and so we're going to take this 
Um, and so that's made an image on my desktop. So on my desktop, I have this image here. And we know it's an image file. And we'll be able to import that. So here I'm going to upload my picture. Here it is right here. Going to open. And then I'll put it in my document as my background. Go ahead and hit done. And so now you can see that I can't move this. I can't delete things. And that's why I usually use this form instead of um, using so recreating something um, from scratch on here whenever I'm talking about using them as worksheets or something that they're going to, have to turn in because this way they can't they can't mess with the formatting they can't accidentally delete it because it's there it's in the background um, so now what they could do is they could, they could go in click on their text box and then add a character uh, a characterization so at the beginning of a Christmas carol Scrooge was grumpy and then they could put that in there then they can create another text box and be able to fill in this graphic organizer they could say he's unkind they could go in he's selfish so it helps those who um, differentiate learning for those kids um, who struggle with writing. Um, so for your younger kids, um, it could help you um, do this by going paperless, whatever your reasons. Um, it's something um, that's really cool and nice to know. Uh, another way you can do this, let me go ahead and add a blank sheet here. Again, deleting these. You can use this by kind of, like I said, creating it. Um, you can make an image out of it and then putting it back in. So I'll show you how I do that. So say I wanted um, my students to compare and contrast the characters of Scrooge and um, Bob Cratchit. So I'm going to create a Venn diagram. Uh, I'm going to make this a little bit more interactive and give them a word bank to pull from um, as long, and, um, and make it to where they can't change the Venn diagram or the titles or directions, but they're able to manipulate um, the word bank um, without the word bank having to be on the paper as well. So we can do that. Let me go ahead. Um, here we're going to insert shape. You can also do that by in insert shape, but I like using my shortcuts where possible. Um, for my Venn diagrams, I'm going to have circles. So I'm going to, if you want it to be a, a complete uh, perfect circle, you can just hit shift as you're dragging that mouse out. If you want it to be a little bit more oval in size, um, just go ahead and drag it however you want to. I, I'm kind of a perfectionist, I like to do this way. Um, here you can see that it's shaded in. Again, you can uh, format that by your fill color. Here, I want it to be transparent um, or white. Pretty much shows up the same. Um, here you can see it's kind of faint to see, so I wanted to make that black. Actually, I want to make it. Let's go make it red. Do it festive, and I'm going to make my line weight thicker. So now we can see it a lot better. Um, again, for my second part, I'm just going to go copy and paste. So Command C, Command V, and I don't like to reinvent the wheel too often. So I'm going to drag that over here. I'm going to make this one green. It shows the difference, the and the contrast. Um, colors, it makes it a little festive. I need to make sure they overlap a little bit more though. So I'm going to drag out these and make the circles a bit bigger. That way they have that nice overlap for a Venn diagram. All right, so now I can go ahead and put in my text box. Um, I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see it a bit more. Name. I'm going to give them space so they can put their name in when they turn it in. I'll need to know that. I'm also going to put some directions in here. So directions, compare. And 
And students really like um, being able to use um, these interactive worksheets. They get tired of writing a lot of times, and this makes it a little bit more fun because they get to use a computer, especially those younger kiddos. Um, my kids really respond well to using technology. It's what they use when they're at home, and so I like to use, utilize it at school as well. I'll mention using the uh, word bank. And I'll further um, make this depth of knowledge. Um, I'm going to have them take whatever they put into the word bank and have them write a paragraph right down here below it. There we go. So I want to make sure they're filling these in um, the right spot. So I'm going to create titles. So this will be Scrooge. Make that a little bigger. So again, to make it bigger, we can make it bolder. We can make it a bigger font. A little bit bigger than that. There we go. Um, let's underline this. I'm going to move a little bit. So be Cratchit. And this will be both. All right, so once you get everything that you know you don't want to be moved or um, be accidentally deleted, again, you're going to take a screen grab of it. So it makes it into a picture that we can utilize. So then, um, again, getting me a clean sheet or a clean slide, um, I can hit that background image. I'll choose that image to upload. Here we see that screenshot. We'll open it up. Hit done. So now I can't select any of this. I can't accidentally delete it because it's in the background. Unlike this one, which uh, my kids could delete, they can take stuff off of it. So this one, it's a much better tool. Um, so now I can, before I give it to them via a uh, classroom, I can type in um, hard worker. Make that a little bit bigger so they can see it. I can get their word bank over here um, that they can utilize later on. And if you didn't want to do a word bank, I, again, uh, it, it depends on what you're doing. Um, and that way, when they, when they open it, it'll look like this. And they can just drag and drop. So they could say, okay, well, they're both hard workers. I know that. Go ahead and size that. They're both hard workers. Um, they can type in their name. They can create a text box up here. Type in their name. And go ahead and turn that in. So you can see where this would be very, very useful, especially for if you're one-to-one, -one, you're going paperless, and you utilize Google Classroom, or if your school is a Google uh, app school, um, maybe contact your network administrator to see um, how that um, can be utilized in your school. If not, um, it's something that's very beneficial that we get a lot of use out of, and it's something that's very fun for all your students. Hopefully, this tutorial can help you um, become uh, a better educator and your students will.